Every mission trip is different and every group is unique. This one was especially touching to me because we was able to do some things that I've never been able to do on a mission trip. First, we was able to dedicate our own orphanage in India. This orphanage will be able to house 40 young boys that come out of very difficult situations and lives that we res rescued them out of. They'll be able to live there and be raised under the love and care of Jesus Christ and some great people there. These are our children. We was able to go to five high schools and be able to speak the gospel to over 4,000 young people, which is what OCI is really all about, to see the life-changing power of Jesus Christ as we spoke the love of Jesus and it touched their hearts and their lives. They will be forever changed by that power and that message. On this trip, in all the ministries we've done, we was able to reach 17,000 people with the message of Jesus Christ. Over 1,500 gave their lives to Jesus and became Christians on this trip. We also seen over 100 people baptized with the power of the Holy Spirit and speaking with other tongues. We seen numerous miracles. There was actually two ladies that was blind that received their sight. Another woman that was scheduled for shoulder surgery that was prayed for and miraculously God healed her shoulder and she does not have to have surgery now. We are still receiving reports of all the things that God done on this trip. For the next few moments, I want you to listen to the testimonies of the people that went on this trip and how God touched their lives and what they've seen, and also see some video clips of all the ministry that took place in Jesus' name. I think when many people talk about missions or think about going on a missions trip, there's always this sort of rose-colored lens that covers the idea. Sure, it's amazing to think about getting to share the gospel with unreached people. It's great to think about uh, showing love to those who have never felt love before. But there's a lot of things that many people only experience for the first time when they go on a missions trip. This past trip, I was able to witness my first experience through the lives of those who were coming for the first time. My first trip was back in 2013 to India, and yet it was so life-changing and it was so impactful so that this time around when I witnessed it in each and every one of the other members' lives, it was just as impactful to me. So the first night of our India trip, we went into a gypsy village, which was by far my favorite one. So as we're walking through the village, we have entire houses on each side. Some of them were tents and some of them were shacks. And as we're walking as a team, people are starting to join us until we get to our destination where there's like tons of children sitting there. And so Caitlin gets up there to talk and the worship band gets up there. And as they are getting ready, I just joined with some of the children and we just began to dance and talk. Um, and they were my favorite just because of the joy that they carried. So I ended up sitting with them during the service instead of sitting um, behind the stage like we usually do. And they just would climb into our laps. Um, they had more jewelry and more makeup than most of the other Indians that we met on this trip. And as I was sitting with them, they would just take off their necklaces and put them on me, which is what these are. So for the first day or, or day and a half of it, just getting over there, I was kind of heart sick. But once we actually got out, into that first gypsy village there and saw the kids and saw the people there that were just hungry for for something and someone to uh, share s some sort of love with them and, and share the truth of Jesus with them. It started to sink in with me then exactly what we were doing there. And uh, it, it progressed from me being uh, heart sick really with what I was missing at home to seeing uh, uh, a hungry people that really wanted a message of hope and, and a message of Jesus Christ. Of course, I love going to the leper colony. I love praying with those people and, and seeing them, sharing some hope and love with them. Outside of the leper colony, they have villages where a lot of people who have been healed from leprosy um, still remain because they're still excluded from their families. and so. One of the first villages we went to, all the people crowded onto the porch 
and after we ministered, we were just talking with the people, and one of the women pulled me over, and she began to tell me her testimony. Um, she shared about how she had a dream one night of a man who came to her, and at the time she didn't have a clue who that was, but she said, now she knows that it was Jesus Christ because her body has been healed from leprosy and she no longer deals with it. Uh, this is my third trip to India. All of them have been with Robbie James. Uh, usually when we do these trips, we're able to do many nighttime crusades, which will feature thousands of uh, village, villagers coming and uh, hearing the me message of the gospel. And during these, we would have uh, hundreds of conversions. This year, the government was cracking down on situations and events like these. So instead of doing the crusades, we had a chance to visit many schools. Robbie and I agree that we missed the Crusades, but it was a great opportunity to minister to um, younger people who you have no idea who they will grow up to be. And as the leadership in the nation needs to change, you have to influence the younger generation in order to rise up and to take over the corrupt regimes that plague the area. You have to have Christians immediately influencing the politics and the structure of the country so that Christianity can be more widely um, spread across the nation. That Friday we went to a school and they only brought in, uh, I think it was the juniors. You know, the girls were sitting on one side and the guys were on the other. So we danced and we sang our songs and I started to give a message. And after the message, it was a simple message. It was just about being set apart, even whenever you feel like you're different, being set apart, serving the Lord, and truly knowing Jesus. So the team, we all grabbed our backpacks and we were going to walk out the door. And this young girl comes running up to me and she has tears rolling down her face. And she says, you have no idea how hard it is to be a Christian here. And so I looked at her and I said, you stay strong because God has a calling on your life. And she said, I just wanna be anointed. I wanna be anointed like you. And in that moment, I realized that the same spirit that's in Cleveland, Tennessee is the same spirit that's in India. The same spirit that was in Jesus lives inside you and it lives inside me. And no matter where we go, we carry that anointing, each and every one of us. Come here and you know, we have to have the perfect seat, we have to have you know, front row, we have to have it perfectly air conditioned so we're not too hot or not too cold. And yet here they are, sweat dripping down their face, crying out to Jesus with all that they had within them. We went to a widow's home. And that was amazing to me because, you know, we prayed for the widows, but at the very end of the service, they prayed for us. And they didn't just pray, but they cried out, they screamed, they were speaking life over us. And we all, most of us, you know, we fell to our faces because it was, it was just humbling. And it was like, oh my gosh, here are these little sweet old ladies who have nothing. You know, some of their families deserted them. And yet here they were crying out for us. And so that was just really amazing for me. I feel the presence of the Lord and it's just like crazy. So I was just like already like emotional because of like the tangible presence of the Lord I felt. But when we were in worship, we sang that song and it just like, when you like read something and then like it comes into your heart, that that's kind of what happened. It was like the message I thought I was gonna share with them was like, God loves you. But in that moment, like, the love of God just overwhelmed me and I couldn't do anything but cry. And I was like, I'm gonna have this like ugly cry face during worship. And they're like, what's wrong with that girl? But I really couldn't stop like weeping even after the song was over because I felt like the Lord was saying like, you thought you were gonna come here and share the love of God, but like I came to bring you the message. Like I love you this morning and so, Right at the end there is, is where I knew that this trip Im impacted me and that it, it pushed me past the limitations that I put on myself. And I think that's what it did for everyone is to push us you know, past the limitations of what we think we can do and, and really go for what God can do through us. I want to thank the OCI family and the partners of VOE for your prayerful support of this mission trip and all mission trips. 
And I also want to thank Perry Stone for his heart for the lost and seeing the transforming power of Jesus Christ in people's lives. For if not for that, none of this would be possible. Thank you for everything you do, and may God bless you, and may all this be added to your account in heaven.